All right, this is lecture two for the Cold War, and we're going to uh, quickly go over the Korean War and uh, just very superficially and kind of talk about what went on uh, and kind of why some of the things happened. There's some big events that happened during the Korean War um, that we'll touch upon as well. So after World War II, Korea is divided. Uh, the North is communist, the South is um, non-communist. Uh, the Japanese were actually forced, they, they own the northern part of Korea, and they actually forced uh, to surrender to uh, Russia. Uh, and then the United States basically had this, the area south of uh, the 38th parallel, which is right here on this dotted line. It separates North and South Korea. It still does today. Uh, and uh, Korea becomes kind of a vision of, of the Cold War and the ideology, ideological war that's going on between communism and capitalism. So the North becomes communist and the South becomes capitalist. Uh, the North had a military advantage. They had the support of China, they had the support of Russia, um, and the South was basically just supported by the United States. Uh, the United Nations condemned the actions of North Korea and they um, ordered troops to South Korea to support the United States. And it's kind of interesting because we've talked about the UN a little bit and there's a, a Security Council and the Security Council, if one country vetoes an action, then uh, the action will be terminated. And Russia or the Soviet Union had a um, had a vote on the Security Council, but they were boycotting at the time because we were uh, because the UN was kind of um, you know not going along with what they wanted, and they were trying to tell uh, the Soviet Union to keep out of these sort of, uh, of events. So with them boycotting, no one was there to um, veto. So um, the the United Nations was able to send people into into North Korea or into South Korea to help against uh, the North Koreans. And the, the Soviet Union was, was boycotting uh, because the UN failed to recognize China as a um, as an official government, and obviously China was communist, and they were supporting the Soviet Union and vice versa. So that's why they'd be upset about that. All right. So United States or the UN advances force uh, forces advance. Okay, it's not a United States offensive; it's the UN offensive. But most of what's going on is done by the United States. MacArthur's in charge of uh, the forces there. Uh, the North Korean forces drive the UN forces down to the tip of Busan, which is the very southern tip of um, Korea. And MacArthur basically makes a daring move. He takes all his troops off and he kind of drives them back up towards uh, the middle of the country and he launches an offensive. And he is able to actually become very successful in this and he forces, uh, pushes the uh, troops to the Yalu River, which is the border between North Korea and China. So he, so he goes from being almost totally taken over to um, taking the entirety of the peninsula. Uh, Truman um, versus MacArthur, they kind of battle it out a little bit. Um, Truman believes that a war with China would start a world war, and and MacArthur is, is opposite. He believes that um, if they attack China, then they would um, they wouldn't enter the war, and they would um, you know, kind of fall. Um, and Truman ends up being correct that China doesn't join the war in 1950. And MacArthur becomes kind of savage, and he wants to start using a lot of his of our nuclear weapons uh, to take out the Chinese, just use them with all-out force and um, destroy the Chinese. And he wants to create like a permanent military demilitarized zone between China and Korea, and just launch a bunch of nukes on that and make that a radioactive hell where that no one could survive uh, to keep the Chinese out. Um, it's kind of an extreme um, view of of war, and Truman believes that you know he does not want to drop the bomb again. So he um, ends up firing MacArthur and basically saying, you know, this you're being insubordinate, being an insubordinate, and um, and he gets rid of him. And this MacArthur is extremely popular in the United States, and for her, Truman to do this, it basically eliminates the ability for him to become reelected. Um, because people are so in favor of what MacArthur has done during World War II and now during uh, the Korean War that Truman has no chance at the next election. Uh, so the war, um, it becomes a stalemate. Uh, the UN and the Chinese forces uh, launched various uh, offenses near the 38th parallel, which is again right down here. Um, the Chinese had pushed back uh, when they entered the war and we're kind of back, at, we're back where we started. Um, and the war ends up dragging on. Um, and um, it's going to basically end at that line. Um, Stalin dies um, in 1953, and um, and then um, 
Eisenhower becomes president, and he's, his goal as president is basically to speed up an armistice. So the war drags on, and um, we have that armistice in 1953. Uh, they set the boundary at 30, the 38th parallel, and they set up a demilitarized zone. And there's this huge, um, you know, mile-long um, trench that's in between here, and it's absolutely dead. It's set up with booby traps and... Um, and landmines and there's guards all over it on both sides and it's still like that today um there there, there was no armistice or there's no ceasefire ever signed or no treaty sorry no treaty ever signed and um war can be picked up at any time uh north korea recently um ended the armistice no fighting has gone on but um you know the fact that that is still you know a, it could potentially be a hot war at any minute creates a lot of tension there um, as far as the war goes, there's 34,000 Americans that died. There's 8,000 that were MIA, means they're missing in action. Uh, so it's kind of a war that, you know, we don't really know how much it really accomplished. Uh, we protected South Korea from becoming communist, and there's still, you know, capitalists today, and there's a huge difference between their society. Um, you know, the capitalism in the South has flourished, and while communism is terrible, and it's one of the worst places you could live in the world. Um, so we did protect those people, um, but we did lose a lot of lives, and uh, war is becoming more and more um, thought of as you know a really negative thing in our country. So um, you know, leading up to the Vietnam War, it's kind of a, a precursor to the events that are going to happen as far as protesting uh, the Vietnam War. So that's it for uh, the Korean War. All right.